Hello, my name is Daniel Loy and I'm a researcher in residence at the Satellite Applications Catapult. My topic is quantum key distribution. I am a senior lecturer in the Computational Nonlinear and Quantum Optics group in the Department of Physics at the University of Strathclyde. We are located in Glasgow, up in Scotland. I study fundamental physics, quantum theory, quantum information processing, computing and communication. In particular, I research space quantum technologies and I specialise in satellite quantum key distribution. My project with the Satellite Applications Catapult is on satellite quantum key distribution. Why satellite quantum key distribution? Quantum computers are being rapidly developed. One of the key applications is to solve certain mathematical problems which underpin public key cryptography, such as RSA and ECC. These methods of cryptography underpin the workings of the internet. Hence, in the next couple of years, we will need quantum secure encryption, which are immune to the threat posed by quantum computers. Quantum key distribution is one such solution and can solve the key distribution problem by which encryption keys can be distributed amongst parties who need to securely communicate with, it, with each other. This enables symmetric key encryption, such as one time pad or advanced encryption standard, which is robust against quantum computers. Current methods of quantum key distribution use fibre networks, but these have limited range due to the absorption of light within the optical fibres, and it isn't likely that we will be able to make direct connections via optical fibre over 1000 kilometres. However, if we want to have secure communication across continents and across the globe, we need to have very long links, and these will either require quantum repeaters, which are very difficult to produce and are yet to make the leap out of the lab, or else we can use satellites. Long distance QKD links will form the basis for the quantum internet as well, allowing us to distribute quantum entanglement which could network quantum computers. So what is QKD? Consider two people who want to talk to each other. We have Alice who is the transmitter and we have Bob who is the receiver. And they are able to send light signals from say the satellite to the ground. Now Alice what she does is she sends single photons from her satellite to Bob. And these single photons, they encode signals, either a zero or a one, depending on the polarization of the photons which she sends. Now, Bob, when he receives these photons, he decides to measure them. He can measure them in uh, two, one of two bases. He can measure them in the horizontal or vertical basis or the diagonal or anti-diagonal basis. Now, the measurement results that Bob gets should be perfectly correlated with that of what was sent by Alice. So if Alice sends a zero and Bob measures in the horizontal vertical basis, he should always get the same result, zero. If, Bob, if Alice sends a one and Bob measures in the diagonal anti-diagonal basis, then Bob should also get a one. Now, in practice, this may not be the case. For instance, there may be errors. So if Alice sends a zero in the, um, by sending a vertically polarized photon and Bob measures in the horizontal vertical basis, sometimes Bob might get a horizontally polarized photon, which indicates a one, but that is not the right signal that Alice sent. So what Alice and Bob do, they compare a subset of all the signals that Alice sent and Bob received and check how many times when Alice sent a zero did Bob get a one. Now, any errors that they detect can be ascribed to the operation of, a, of an eavesdropper Eve. And this will indicate that, that potentially that the photons were intercepted and tried to be decoded. Now, if the error rate is low enough, then Alice and Bob can still have perfect secrecy by distilling the privacy that is in the remaining photons which were sent and measured. And this private key can then be used in further encryption protocols such as one time pad or advanced encryption standard. So what does a satellite QKD system look like? There are two main ways of operating satellite QKD. The first is called untrusted node, 
where the satellite distributes pairs of entangled photons to ground stations, receiver A and receiver B. Receiver in A and receiver B, they measure the photons and the correlations between the results form a key which even the satellite who sent the photons cannot crack. This means that you do not need to trust the satellite when creating the keys. However, untrusted node QKD is very challenging to perform in practice. The Missius satellite, which was launched by China, has demonstrated this but had very low key rates. More practical in the short term is a trusted node. The satellite acts as a trusted relay, creating keys between separate places on the Earth and relaying um, the keys between them. Here you do need to trust the operation of the satellite, but in some circumstances this is a valid security assumption. These can achieve high key rates, kilohertz to perhaps megahertz, and this system was used by the Mitius satellite to link Austria and China in a video conference in 2017. So satellite QKD has been shown to be feasible by the Missius mission. However, it still faces many challenges. Space is expensive. Big satellites cost a lot to build and to launch. Space, space takes a long time to develop. New components and systems take a long time to get space ready. Space is also very challenging to work in. Launch ex exposes the satellite to shock and vibration, and the space environment with its vacuum, thermal cycling, and radiation environment means that components and systems have to be hardened. There's also limited size, weight, and power available for satellites and their payloads. For satellite QKD in particular, there are other challenges which need to be overcome. Optics, pointing, and tracking all have to be very high precision, very accurate. We are sending weak quantum signals over long distances between a quickly moving satellite and the ground. Daylight and weather also can pose challenges. The background light from the sun means that the weak quantum signals have a hard time of being detected. Thus, QKD at the moment is usually performed at night. Clouds, fog, smoke and dust can also obscure the weak optical signals being sent. And also the cost to develop these systems and deploy them so that they can actually provide services can be quite expensive. Specialized quantum optics components and substance systems are required and so far dedicated satellites have been built. So my researcher in residence program at the Satellite Applications Catapult is to try to solve or to address some of these challenges. The first is to look at a roadmap for the development of satellite QKD. We will look at next generation services and capabilities such as daylight operations, enhanced availability, higher key generation rates, coverage and ground segment, and how to integrate QKD into conventional optical communication systems currently being developed for satellites. We will also look at the supply chain. We try to identify current national capabilities in the supply of components and subsystems. We will identify gaps in the supply and work with upstream suppliers to plug those gaps. We also look at developing the markets and applications for satellite quantum key distribution. We will try to identify the use cases, engage potential end users and develop new applications. As a first step, we have been successful in, in obtaining funding for the VSAT QT project. This is a project funded by Innovate UK and it is a 12 month feasibility study. The project is led by Airbus in conjunction with the satellite application Catapult and Strathclyde and involves several small to medium enterprises. These are Craft Prospect, KETS, Archangel Lightworks and New Quantum. This project will develop supply chain, the technology roadmaps, the markets and applications. This video has covered the basics of satellite quantum key distribution and my project at the Satellite Applications Catapult as a researcher in residence. My research would not have been possible without the collaboration of many people. I would like to thank the Strathclyde Space Quantum Technology Team, the Scottish Centre of Excellence in Satellite Applications, the University of Bristol, Craft Prospect, and my collaborators at the Centre for Quantum Technologies at the National University of Singapore. I would also like to acknowledge my funders, 
and would especially give my thanks to those at the Satellite Applications Catapult, which have made my residency an enjoyable experience. Thank you for watching.